E riddle here. I wanted to take some time to come back to the project that I've been working on the last couple months. And I tried to bump up the light a little bit with the um, with the spotlight, but still not quite getting it. Um, we got a lot of rain out today, so it's a little overcast. But uh, basically, my bedroom, the architecture is kind of strange. And it'll be changed eventually, but the room always felt cold and it always felt ugly to me. I brought art into it and uh, it still just felt cold and... It's just not right. So I decided as a gift to myself that I would change that because I think uh, bedrooms are a really important place that you should feel warm and safe and uh, grounded so you rest and sleep well. And now I've got really, really happy with, with what's going on here. So to explain to you how all this started, um, I'm kind of a strange artist in the fact that I don't pre-plan anything. Uh, everything just comes out of my head and I just freehand everything. Uh, just I have a certain brain uh, makeup capacity that allows me to do that and with uh, relative success. And so I knew I wanted trees. I also knew that I wanted them to be somewhat stylized because if they were too thick and realistic, they would overpower the room. I also knew that I had these interesting angles to work with, with the bridge going across here, and of course the line of the ceiling, and also all these interesting the angles over here that I could play around with, wrapping the tree branches and leaves and animals onto to give it even more dimension. When you're when you're doing a mural, uh, if you want it to look more in depth and and have more motion which is motion translates to emotion or feeling you're going to want to you know either be really good with perspective or take your time layering your colors and when you layer the colors and you put shapes the leaves behind branches and in front of branches and you plot that out carefully it's going to give you a lot more depth with your mural and uh, that's going to make it look more dynamic. Um, I'm a self-taught painter. I really don't know what I'm doing, but uh, people have been uh, very complimentary of this so far. The painting actually started with the trees and what's difficult to see, oh, you can kind of see it now. I went in after I did the trees and I added the highlights and shadows and I even brought some metallic into it. And the cool thing about the metallic silver, I also did that with the spider web and the spider web in different lighting actually disappears. It's not doing that now because we've got a spotlight on it, but that's kind of magical. So you don't always, you only see this metallic in certain lighting and it makes it feel like it's uh, moist, like there's some type of actual moisture onto the tree, which adds another layer of of uh, dimension to it. Uh, a lot of the orchids are just stylized. They just kind of came out of my imagination and I played with the paint because ultimately, you know, a bedroom, you're gonna have a lot of time that the light is lower and you're gonna have a lot of shadows and things. So I tried to uh, play around with colors and, uh, sh and, and, and shadowing with the colors in a way that it would be uh, accentuated, accentuated and uh, still show up really well in muted light. And uh, I achieved that, it actually it's really beautiful. And it was, the process was really interesting because on this side, I added the shadowing on the trees, the highlights and the lowlights with paint. But by the time I was a week or so into this, I realized I could get the same effect by just starting my paint out here really dark and then working it in slowly and thinly. And that's actually, I didn't add paint to this one. I just worked my paint differently. And because this was a, a learning process, 
you know, that only came along with, you know, after playing around and working with the paint for a week or so. So the same with this tree. I didn't add paint to get those highlights. I just worked my paint starting from the outside and not too much. And then it would automatically thin itself out as I got further into the tree trunk. And then it's just all those little details, like the little baby birds crying for food, this, the twig in the bird's mouth. Now this is, couldn't get any worse than this in regards to nature because one of these birds should be more muted and the other one should be more color pronounced, the male usually, but uh, who knows that except for people who are really connected to nature or have um, explored biology. Uh, so I had a deadline because my spouse was coming home from an extended business trip. And so I'm gonna to continue, to, uh, continue to develop this with more insects and more birds and what have you. Uh, but I, I just needed to get it to a place that it looked finished enough. I also really enjoyed bringing these clouds in. I used a flat paint and the ceiling was already the same white flat. And so it, again, it adds this shadowing or this dimension to it. And then going into, going into these leaves with, you know, the vein, the putting the veination into the leaves with different colors. Uh, that was my main goal, to get that detail done because that really helps to bring the motion and the depth into the the mural. Uh, another thing, when you're using a ladder, of course, you have to be really careful. This was a, literally gave me a pain in the neck. I had a couple nights I had to take a muscle relaxant because I had my head back bent back so obscurely for so many hours. Um, so I, I would work on it a little bit, walk away, work on it a little bit, walk away. This bird originally was uh, in the painting, in the drawing or the photograph online was black. And I thought, oh my God, that bird's so cool. It seems like an injustice, such a beautiful design that it would be black. So I changed it to this macaw blue instead of uh, painting macaws. And uh, I think I did a good job on the shadowing and playing with the colors of this bat. But uh, what was really fun is I brought a friend in here to show them and I asked them, I said, uh, did, you, did you see the snake? And they, they said, wait a minute, wait a minute. And I let them look and look and look for about 10, 15 minutes and then finally they gave up. But the snake is right there. And that was a lot of fun to paint. Oh, that's another thing. So if you're gonna add animals and things to your mural, I, I think it's best, even when you're dealing with a good heavy pigmented paint, which a lot of paint isn't heavy pigmented, especially when you buy the little jars of, of latex paint, and I will get into the type of paint that I actually use to achieve this. Um, of course, you could paint the flowers and the leaves over your, your tree branches and your leaves, but you're gonna see that. It's gonna be difficult to put enough paint on and to cover up the texture to make it look like you just poorly planned. So when I painted these trees in, I left negative spaces. So I would just leave like a, 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 a four to 14 inch section of the tree branch open up to place a bird or a snake or a bat. And this way I didn't have to work as hard painting uh, several coats of paint to cover up the fact that I was painting on top of something that I'd already painted. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah. Little sweet detail there. What else? Uh, that pretty much covers it. I'm just really happy with it. When you Now when I lay in bed, I feel like I'm getting this, this beautiful hug from nature, like I'm being protected. It's, it's just really, it's just such a quality of life thing for me, you know? 
and it's just so much, it's just, it's, it makes me, I'm so more happier to be in this space and be in this room. Uh, I also changed all the art in the room before I had art with a lot of pinks and reds and abstract stuff. But, um, because I've been collecting art for so many years, I switched it all out to, to nature things. And this is the thing about art. People always think that it's like you have to be educated in order to buy or collect art or you have to um, spend a lot of money for art. And that's the thing. You don't. But one thing you do have to, and this is pointed out to uh, uh, by a friend of mine, is you have to have some confidence. I mean, you have to know who you are. And I think a lot of people don't buy art for their homes because they're too insecure about what other people are going to think about their choice, which is, you know, that's a, something we, it, it, you get to a certain age, you want to take that shit to a therapist because, you know, you should be happy with, uh, you should know yourself well enough or take the time to get to know yourself well enough that you're not afraid of your personal choices and tastes and always need that external validation by the world as it puts you in a really vulnerable position, honestly. So uh, give you an example where I'm going to tell you, you know, you're going to be like, oh yeah, this rich guy, blah, blah, blah. Um, I have a college education. All my education passed that and I was a D student, so can't get me there. And this beautiful framed Audubon print which is worth, I think, 600 to to $1,000 now. I found it at the thrift store. <laughs> I think I paid, it was on sale. I waited till it was on sale at the thrift store. And I think it was around 25 or $30 when I bought it. Uh, the frame alone is worth a couple hundred bucks. Um, this was a gift from a friend. It's a, a beautiful framed print of a, uh, one of my favorite carnivorous plants, Nepenthes. There's other carnivorous plants in here as well. There's some sundews and, and some other species. I don't know all of the carnivorous plants. So that was just because they knew I loved plants and carnivorous plants. And so they hooked me up with this one. And then if you have friends that are artists and you support them, they give you art as gifts. Now, this was an artist, and he was working on a, a particular body of work, and uh, I would mail him things that uh, were themed to the, what he was trying to do with his body of work. And it, it was just stuff I was finding, garage sales and thrift stores, and he was really appreciative. And so he gave me this beautiful print, and uh, Ed Martin has passed on, sadly, but he was a great, he was a great guy. He's a great guy. So my point is showing you all that is that you just got to look for it. You have to want it. You have to, you have to just understand that versus a blank wall or hanging garbage from, you know, garbage from some online website, you really can still find beautiful art out there. And then, of course, if you're making a certain amount of money, you really need to support culture. You really should support culture because if you don't support artists, they all disappear and starve. And, um, you know, notoriously artists have starved and some of the best artists out there will never be found, never be recognized. And partially because they're not being supported enough to make real art. And I, I do support artists and buy art from artists as well as making art. Okay, so I have one more thing to show you. Hopefully this has inspired you to, to paint your own mural. And of course, use a pencil if, if you need to sketch things out. Don't be intimidated by someone else's skills. I've spent more of my life than not developing art skills. And uh, so it's, n it's not something that everyone can do, but uh, a lot of people could do it. And um, if you need to use a projector and project the image on the wall and trace over it, that is a very viable solution. Uh, you can, if you're good with drawing, you could trace it out with um, your hand and a pencil, light sketch it out. It'll give you the basic form 
to fill in to have a good toucan or whatever. There's always, there's some, you know, endless ways to make things happen. But the trick is you can be one of those people who just admire or um, live in lack and blame everyone else for what you do have. Or you can be one of those people like me that makes things happen and uh, has ne never settled. I just have never settled. When I want something, I figure it out. And a lot of those um, trying to figure it out was just making, learning how to create it. And uh, that is a valid form of intelligence. And the interesting thing about that journey of never feeling poor and always enriching my life by figuring it out is that um, people who didn't have those skills that were really, really valuable slash quality people, highly educated people, highly creative people, wealthy people have always been attracted to me and have always wanted me around and in their lives because of my, my value, which I set and I exercised. And I guess that's the important thing. Unlike, you know, everyone going for the cheap attention and the cheap money right now with the TikTok and Instagram, YouTube, OnlyFans, all these kids that are whoring themselves out, not understanding the long-term implications of that. You know, there's a big difference between being a character and having character. And to develop character takes time and it takes effort. And it takes failure. And uh, But in the end, what you'll be is a mature, wise, and very secure individual. Okay, I'm going to show you now. You might want to know what kind of paint I used. And this is really interesting because I had purchased paint to do a, a wall mural in my, uh, on the wall in my backyard. And it was a special kind of paint that uh, I got on Amazon and it, it was a little expensive and I was a little suspicious of it, but I read online that it was really great paint. And so I thought, okay, it's gonna be exposed to the sun. I guess if it has all these positive reviews that it, it must be a good quality paint. So I bought all the basic colors because the one thing you wanna look in a paint is if you can mix the colors in order to get unique colors. Because when I was doing this mural, to get the depth and the shadowing, you know, I would start with a certain green color, but then I would add a little yellow to that or a little white to that in order to get uh, a lighter shade or to do the veins in the leaf so that there was a nice contrast, but it was still in the same color family. So I did, this was outdoor acrylic paint. Now it had a really good, oh, there you go, selection of color but it wasn't heavy pigmented, but it was okay for like filling in little details or adding a little bit to get a variation in color, like in the leaves or in the bark. But I can't, I wouldn't highly recommend this for painting murals. It's great for, you know, getting little details in, but if you're gonna be doing tons of leaves or tons of, uh, you have to c cover a lot of square footage this could get expensive really fast. And it said it had these glow in the dark colors. They don't glow at all. They don't work at all. That was a complete uh, lie, complete fallacy. So here you can see where I mixed different colors with my greens to get the different tones that you saw in the mural. And then I'm saving all that. You also want a nice variety of brushes and make sure you've got good quality brushes. Brushes, um, it's just really important. You know, if you're gonna be doing detail, you need small brushes that you can get that, you know, those, the, the, that, that fine tip with. And if you're gonna be doing medium-sized things, you need a medium-sized brush with good control. Uh, that being said, you don't always have to spend a lot of money for brushes. I found decent quality brushes at uh, the dollar store or at a craft store. The thing is, 
there's acrylic brushes, which means it's made of plastic and it will not absorb moisture. So it's gonna flow differently and it's not gonna be as smooth of a, a line when you paint with it. And then there's um, brushes made with natural hair. So real painters prefer, of course, better brushes made from natural fibers instead of the acrylic. The only time I find that the acrylic brushes are necessary is if you're working with harsh chemicals, especially bleach. If you're working with bleach, like to do designs on fabric, you got to use an acrylic brush because the bleach won't eat the, the brush and with it, bleach will eat natural fibers down to the nub. This is the paint brand that I bought for from, from Amazon to do the painting. And what I noticed about this brand of paint is that it's heavy, heavy, heavy pigment. You're really getting what you're paying for. It's a one coat deal. It's super, super thick. It's just really high quality paint. And look at the name, it's just called Mural Paint. Sorry, I wish I had, I will find the link on Amazon to it though. These are 16 ounce jars. They have smaller jars, but because I was doing that big mural in the backyard, I had bought these, these really large jars from there. And uh, they weren't cheap, but it was a good investment. I mean, you get what you pay for because if it wasn't heavy, heavily pigmented, if it wasn't good paint, then I wouldn't have really striking, um, detailed, rich designs. And I would have to go over the design several times in order to, to get the uh, desired color and effect that I wanted. Yeah. So yeah, this, this, this paint has been a dream, a real dream. So you're gonna get your right brushes, a nice selection to play with, and take care of your brushes. You know, we live in a world, I am just always been, my mom kind of ingrained this into me to, to take care of stuff. Now this is a super cheap brush, but I'm still gonna be able to use that over and over again until it finally wears out. And how you do that is, of course, rinse all your paint off of it really, really well. And then you just take dish soap and you work the dish soap into the brush and you leave the dish soap to dry into your brush, just straight dish soap. And what that does is it keeps your brush shaped really well and it keeps it from drying out. And uh, it's the best way to do it. Just a little dishwashing liquid will we'll preserve your brushes and you can use them over and over again. Okay, that is it. I'm going to get back to work. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any, any questions, technical questions, or if there's anything I can do to inspire you, uh, please leave your comments below. And please uh, share, like and share this with anyone you know who is creative or wants to make their home a little more beautiful. Uh, also your office. I mean, think about how much time people spend in their office space. And then, you know, it, it's already kind of a cage. And then uh, look at your office space right now if you're watching this at work and you're gonna notice how sad it is. You probably have no art in the wall. There's probably no living things in there. Uh, you know, you spend a lot of time there. That should be a space that is that is aesthetically comfortable and aesthetically handsome or beautiful because it's quality of life and it has a real effect on your emotions and your conscious and your subconscious. So treat yourself, you're worth it. It's a value thing. It's a value thing. Okay, happy holidays.